cash flow crew what's going on out here today trying to get some cash flow going I hadn't dropped a video in a while just going through some of my day-to-day -day activities but I wanted to talk about a recent opportunity that I had uh, with a seven house package deal that I'm working with right now and how I got that deal one of those techniques or tactics or whatever you want to call it that I would say would separate somebody who is really I guess maybe a beginner in real estate to someone who is progressing uh, a bit more faster is just simply following up and something that I see that a lot of newer wholesalers or investors uh, what they don't do is they'll get leads in or they may be working with somebody already and the deal drops through but they don't follow up meaning they don't get back in contact with that person to see if they can make the deal work or to see if there there have been any changes since the last time they contacted them but following up is one of the key reasons why my business has been able to keep going even though we're in a pretty competitive market here in Memphis. But I kind of tell you guys about this seven house package deal that I have now and how I got it. When I first started off in wholesale real estate, there was a company that contacted me about a couple of houses that they had. And they told me that they got my information just from, I think it was a postcard or a letter that I had written to them. And this was going back close to maybe two or three years ago when I was still handwriting postcards and handwriting mail. It took up a lot of my time, but in this case, it was effective because this company from overseas, New Zealand, they contacted me, said they had my information, wanted to send over um, an email with the, the information for the houses. So I responded to them and went out to check out a couple of houses. And it turns out, you know, they had a whole portfolio of I can't even remember how many houses, but it was somewhere maybe around 20 houses or so. And they kept sending me these houses and I would treat them right on the price, stay in contact with them. And I just got them sold one after the other, just back to forth, just getting these houses sold for them to the point where my early success as a beginner advanced me along a lot quicker than other people who had been in the game um, around the same time or for a while to the point where, you know, I had maybe 10 houses or so that I got sold for them. And this was just over the course of a few weeks. So a good majority of my early deals, experience, everything came from working just with this one company and getting those houses sold for them, treating them right, treating my buyers right to where I came back to them just to check up, um, just to see how things were going with their business maybe two or three weeks or so ago. And I asked them if they had any other houses that they still needed to sell. So they sent seven houses over to me and I looked at the numbers on them. All the numbers look good. And we actually have one in escrow now that's set to close, hopefully this week. But again, that just all comes from following up. And it's not just with that company that I follow up with. Whenever I get a lead in, I'll make a note to go back in a few weeks and check with that person or go back with some of the companies that I have worked with before who need houses sold. I'll contact them just every now and then, buyers too, just to keep that line of communication going, to let them know that I am still in the business and still willing to work, ready to work with you. And on that note, a lot of these companies who are having just these massive earnings months, six figure months, they have great marketing plans, but they also have systems for following up with past leads, buyers and everything. But just taking that extra step to follow up has really saved me in some times when business was running slow and I needed to generate some leads and get some some more houses in my pipeline but what i'm gonna do now i have a couple of houses that i need to check out and this is from another company that has a package of houses that they're considering selling so do just a bit of driving for dollars and see if we can find any other good ones while we're out all right so i just drove by one of the properties that the company sent me but it's occupied so i won't do any type of video or try to get on the inside of that one but i did just drive by a really nice one and i'll show you guys what you need to be looking for if you're looking for an investment property or something like a rehab project, something that you can get for a good price where the seller may be motivated to go ahead and sell it. All right, guys, so when you're looking for those types of houses where the seller might be willing to go ahead and sell it for a good price, this is what we're looking for. See, we got grass almost as tall as me, so grass hasn't been cut in who knows how long, a few months or so. Looks like the entire carport needs to be redone trash is under it and just like I mentioned in another video when you're in Memphis doors are usually open and this house has probably been vacant for a long time because we got a real old school box TV right here so who knows how long they've been going out of this house 
So a house like that, if we were to contact the owner, it would probably be a pretty good chance that we could pick it up for a good price. But that also depends on a lot of different other factors, like if there's a mortgage on the property, if the property is has a bunch of taxes on it, or if it's even already owned by the city and scheduled to be sold in tax sales. So some other things that come into play there, but for this house, if we can get in contact with this owner, um, I mean, we, we'd go ahead and make them an offer and see if we can just close it out. All right, guys, just since I left that neighborhood with the vacant house that you just saw, things started to kind of pick up and get busy. I still work as my own landlord, so I went to go and check on my tenant who just gave me a quick call about a small issue. And then right after that, I went maybe five minutes around the corner to check on a property that another large company sent me with a, um, a package deal. And it looks like it's one that we're going to be able to work with. So went ahead and sent an offer off on that one. While I was out, I followed up on another property that was close by. But my virtual assistant contacted this seller maybe a week or so ago. And we were in the right price range. Went ahead and made them an offer on the property. And the seller said that she had to discuss it with her children. So went ahead, followed up with her on that one, waiting for a response on it. If we don't get one, we're going to have to follow up again and make sure we get this property. And then I'm not even sure what happened. I guess my virtual assistant got to a hot spot on her list where she was sending me leads back to back. So I have two that's in the area now that I'm going to check out and then one that's a bit further out that I'll check out tomorrow. But they're keeping me busy. It's a great feeling not have to get on the phones and do a bunch of calling because they handle all that for me. So about to head that way and see what the houses are looking like. All right, guys, I'm not going to put the house number or the whole house in the video, but this house has been sitting vacant for several years. And just since we're on the topic of following up, I've been in contact with this owner, the person that owns this house for at least two years. And now my virtual assistants have been talking to her, um, but she's motivated to sell. It's one that needs several thousand dollars in repairs, landscaping, and just it needs a bunch of work but she has an emotional attachment to the house, so she's not quite ready to let it go. But when she gets ready to sell it, I mean, we'll be the ones that she comes to. And that's just because we've taken the time, we've built that relationship with her. We understand her situation. We understand what she needs to get out of the house. But first and foremost, we're making sure that we take care of her and her needs. And like I said, again, we're gonna keep following up with her until we go ahead and get it done and make sure we can help her out with it. All right, guys, that's one of the houses that I'm supposed to check out right now. And you can see again, these vacant houses in Memphis, if they've been sitting long enough, usually the door is open. And right across the street from it, you have two other vacant houses. So. One thing I like about this neighborhood, and it really brings back memories every time I'm in the area, but the second property that I ever bought is in that neighborhood. And if I had known then what I know now, that there's no way that I would have sold that property when I did, and I would have kept it because it was just a great cash flow on property. But I was looking at it maybe a month or two ago and saw that it was vacant, tried to see who possibly could have owned the property at the time, sent them a letter and everything but they never got back to me but when i just drove by it i saw that it was blue now so i know the company that has the property they, they pick up properties in the area throughout memphis pretty rapidly and i can't even lie that one almost hurt me because i wanted to pick that one up again for myself and if it ever becomes available again to where i can go ahead and pick it up at a good price then i'll be a hundred percent going for it all right, guys, this is the last one for the day. It's in a great area, but the condition is a lot worse than what I think the owner realizes. The owner doesn't live here in Memphis. They're out of state investors, and they gave him the key box code to come and check it out. But we're in Memphis. Property's been vacant for a while, so guess what? Open door. But this one, I just went on the inside. We'll go on the inside in a second. It's going to need a full rehab. 
So I'm gonna get some, we got another open door over here. I'm gonna get some pictures for the owner just to show them the condition that it's in. All right guys, so the first thing I noticed is we have rotten floor, so I'm gonna have to watch my step going through. This one's been pretty beat up. Super old school house. Got the kitchen here. There's a dip in the floors here. So this house, for the most part, needs to be completely redone. Let's see what the bathroom looks like, or what's left of it. All right guys, so that was it for the video. Just a quick glimpse of my day, but we're gonna go ahead and end it there. And I'll leave this disclaimer just for anybody who might be new to my page, who's following the journey, following the moves, taking the tips, or even taking the advice that I have to give. But I am not a guru. I'm not even anywhere close to being a guru or a pro at real estate. So when you're watching these videos, just understand that I am still an investor who is on his journey to get to that next level. But what I do, and I try to show everything realistically, what I go through daily, all of these different things that I go through, I try to learn something from them daily. So that's what this entire video log is about. It's a way for me to learn from my mistakes and hopefully to help somebody else who is going through the same process of trying to get started. Or maybe you're even going through similar situations that you've already seen me go through and you can kind of learn from those mistakes that I've already done. And I guess this message is more so for those people who have reached out to me and they want mentoring and coaching and have just all these different questions for me. But just understand that we're all on that same journey just trying to get to that financial freedom. The only difference that, or maybe even the difference between me and some of you guys is that I'm an action taker. So, so even a few years back when I had that opportunity to jump back into real estate, didn't have a lot of money, didn't have a lot of knowledge, whatever I didn't know, and in the beginning I didn't know much, but whatever I didn't know, I learned as I went and I had the right people around me to guide me in the in the right direction and who I could um, go to for help when I needed it. So on that note, I guess one of the best things that you can do for yourself, even if you don't know a lot or you don't have a lot of experience, is to learn some of the basics and then just take action. Because there's so many different ways to make money in real estate that you don't have to be a rich person. You just have to continuously learn. And again, you have to be around the right people. So even around you, you have to think about the people who you're around all the time. So if you have to change that crowd to be around some winners, then change your crowd and get around some winners because all of that knowledge is going to rub off on you. It's gonna pay off in the end. And then you'll start to see yourself starting to soak in all of these different things that you never even thought were possible. But whatever city that you are in, or you can Google whatever the city's name is, plus Real Estate Investors Association. And it should tell you whatever Real Estate Investors Association is in your city, give you the details. There should be a website. And this is the place that you'll wanna be, especially starting out to meet other people who are already actively in it other beginners who have the same mindset and you'll want to surround yourself with these types of people but that's it guys and i tell you what if you're already a member of a real estate investors association let me know which one it is and let me know if you think it's helped you out in your game or if it was just a big waste of time and if you haven't done so make sure you like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time peace